Who is the best quarterback in Cowboys history in your mind? And who is the worst quarterback you've ever seen in a Cowboys uniform? I have what I believe to be the best metric to do the math on these things and come up with the answers. And it's obviously tough when you're going from different eras and things like that. But when you start getting into some of these advanced numbers like a DVOA that measures a, a player's efficiency and compares the success on every single play to a league average based on situation and opponent, opponent this is accounting for so many things. And it's, it's probably the single best way to decide how good or bad or whatever a player was. And so when you look at Cowboys history and think about the quarterbacks, now the DVOA thing only goes back to like 1990. So as old as I can get on you is Aikman. I don't have this for Stahlbach, but there are advanced metrics for Stahlbach that would lead to believe he was a top five quarterback of all time. Uh, so Roger the Dodger, as Wolchuk is wearing a Roger Stahlbach shirt today. It's a great shirt. Uh, it's a great shirt. Gosh, it's Thank a great shirt. Thank you very shirt. much. Thank you to Brian Broaddus for uh, the gift last training camp. That was a Broaddus hand-me-down? It sure was. Can you imagine what Broaddus' closet looks like when he has Roger the Dodger hand-me-downs? His closet is morphing into my closet. That is incredible, dude. Well, I think the worst is Ben DiNucci. Uh, okay. For that game? Yeah, yeah, that was the worst game. That's the worst thing I'd ever worst seen. Worst season's got to be like Chad Hutchinson or Drew Henson. Yeah, we had, uh, Gavin, before you got here, we had a run where we had some god-awful quarterbacks. We had some god-awful personnel guys, too, yeah, picking those players. Yeah, but to you me, can say that. Well, I was talking about myself. I oh, guess. I know. <laughs> so the, but... If I'm no, is somebody cl somebody close to as bad as Nooch? No, so here's the oh, thing. Bro, well, they're they're Anthony Wrights, and we, yeah. We I don't know if play. anybody was as bad as Nooch. I, I'm saying that because I really don't know, but I'm with Dawson. For what my eyeballs have seen for four quarters of play, I don't think it's gotten worse than the Nooch. But this is this is over the course of a season with a minimum okay. of 200 passes. Yeah, hey, I'm going right. to go so, with uh, Chad Hutchinson. Chad Hutchinson was really as bad. the single worst quarterback season ever. Yeah, for I, I, care. I, I mean, like that. It, it was early Drew 2000s. Drew Henson, we put all that into Drew Henson, and he lasted a half. That damn Thanksgiving game. Yeah, yeah, against the Bears. Henson like, gave you two quarters? Yes. They were down 21-7 yeah. to seven at half. Yeah, and, and then Vinny Parcells, Testaverde. Parcells pulled him at half. Like, we're up, and he pulls him. Vinny Testaverde and Julius Jones. I think Julius Jones scampered on yeah. back for a victory. I believe it, dude. I believe it. So, Babe Laufenberg never attempted more than 200 passes in a single season, throw right? throw Babe under the bus I don't here. believe so. Well, it was, it was bad for my guy. Well, you know, I, and that, it, it pains me to say it. it you hurts. know, Ryan Leaf didn't put up too many passes, nope. did he? Nope, he was bad. No, yeah, Ryan Leaf was bad. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Clint Sterner. Clint, oh, that Sterner. Yeah. Clint had some nooch in him. Clint had some nooch Clint, in him. Yeah. Where he was like, there were times where he'd flash something, you'd go, oh, okay. And then other times you're like, why are we playing with this guy today? You know, I'm sure Clint's doing good radio down in yeah, Houston. Yeah, he is right? crushing in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. It's quality. Oh, Matt quality Castle, part. 2015. That's not Ooh, a bad call. Yep. But they were going call. back and forth. Like, well, Romo got hurt, right? Yeah, the got hurt. yeah, yeah Castle I mean, had to start several games. Yeah. And then uh, didn't they get Kyle Orton or something? Or was yeah. it this, a different they had year? they had somebody that was terrible. Brandon Weed. They thought yes, and they oh, thought Brandon Matt Weed. Castle was going to be better. He yeah. wasn't better. Yeah, yeah Brandon Weed. Jason yeah. Garrett kept giving them the worst game plans ever. Yeah. And then and it was predictable results. I'm thinking though, based on this metric, it might be Troy Aikman. The for, best for the best. For the best. Okay, so that's how this all started was Cowboys Stats and Graphics, uh, which is a great follow on uh, on Twitter, at Cowboys Stats. I just saw over the weekend where he was getting into conversations about Aikman in, in general and like Aikman versus Romo. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he started dropping some good knowledge bombs and he had the EPA and all that kind of stuff and the adjust, uh, adjusted net yards per attempt ranking, which is another one that encompasses a lot of things that uh, can really show how dominant a quarterback was, and that's the particular metric where Roger Staubach crushes all time, where Pat Mahomes is number one, there's a Montana in there, and then it's like, boom, Staubach's like fourth or fifth all time in that. And that's a pretty good all-encompassing metric amazing. as well to all decide time. how good or bad a quarterback was. Uh, but for Aikman, this was over the weekend, he pointed out the adjusted net yards per attempt rate for Aikman, and Aikman was third in 1992, second in 1993, fifth in 1994, and second in 1995. So it just goes to show, I was like, okay, cool, man, this is like a cool thinking, deal on Aikman. Think of the era of Good quarterbacking. Run. You're talking about Dan Marino, John Elway, Steve Young, Joe Montana, like, these are this some is, legends this in there. A goal. And then Brett, I'm not going to say his, I mean, there were some amazing quarterbacks. Favre? 
Yeah, that's right. I didn't. That nobody said it. No, to yeah, me. it worked we're out. Good. There were words in between the thank, Brett thank and you. then the Favre. So we're good. Uh, but then today, Aaron Schatz, uh, spelled like Schatz, but pronounced like Schatz. I always thought it was Schatz. I know. I did too until I heard him say it for himself. And I was like, okay, it's Schatz. Uh, he is the head man for Football Outsiders who does some work with ESPN as well. And he chimed in. He was like, hey, I got a Troy Eggman thread for you guys, a little Twitter thread. He was oh, like, come I, on. He's like, I wanted to send this to Cowboys Stats from a couple of days ago. He finally got around to it. So he goes, you know, Cowboys Stats was writing about Aikman versus Romo versus Dak. And he was pointing out the expected points added from 1994 and 1995 when talking about Troy Aikman. But, of course, he says, I have the DVOA going back before that. So the, their advanced stats for 91 and through 93 as well. So he says the top DVOA seasons for the Cowboys in the history of the Cowboys being uh, an NFL team, the number one season by a quarterback was Troy Aikman in 1993. I believe it. The second best season for a quarterback in Dallas Cowboys history was Troy Aikman in 1995. Damn right it was. Super Bowls. And he had to drag that team there, didn't he? Freaking legend. Coaching. I mean, and he, fight he, off Skip Bayless. He had to be the coach. The third best season in Dallas Cowboys history. Now, remember, this metric does not get back to Roger the Dodger. So, please, spare me on that 92, one. Troy. You know, I think Roger would be better than all of these guys based on some of the things that I've seen. And I haven't really seen him play, just for the record. 2016, Dak Prescott's the third best quarterback season in That's the history a, of the Dallas Cowboys. Hell of a year. Yeah, the, it's amazing what happens when you get great protection. Great protection. Best running game in the league. Good things happen. The fourth best quarterback season in Dallas Cowboys history was Troy Aikman in 1992. Shoot, yeah, boy. Let's go. So three of the top four are Aikman years. And because I think Aikman does the, the 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 raw counting numbers don't really reflect how great Troy was. No, when you not look at back, all. it doesn't stack up. We're talking about Derek Carr having records right, for the, the Raiders. The passing yards, and, the touchdowns, yeah, like it, the big picture stuff. No, Troy wasn't a guy that's going to go win you a fantasy football game. But what he is doing is being an excellent quarterback, arguably one of the best on the football field and winning you Super Bowls. Which one would you rather have? The fifth best season by a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys since 1990 or whatever it is, is Tony Romo in 2009. Oh, it was a good year. Yeah. Uh, defense was outstanding that year. I, but it was more bus driver Romo than, than uh, you know, lighten up the scoreboard Romo. And I think that's a very interesting thing about all five of these seasons, whether they were Aikman years or Dak in 2016, they weren't even 4,000 yards. You know, these are very conservative game plans, probably averaging around 230 yards per game passing. Yeah, 2009, I think, was the breakout of Miles Austin. Uh, Yeah. Oh, that's right. Was that the Kansas City Chiefs game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that was 09 there. He 2014 crushed. was definitely the bus driver Romo one. I thought that would be the one that well, was Well, that's there. when they, they rode DeMarco Murray yes. the majority of the year, and then he broke his wrist or he broke his hand. And remember, then they had to come in December, and Romo oh, just right. lit it up. Mm -hmm. Like I they, thought that was Romo's best year, yeah. was 2014. Yeah. Uh, so he he uh, goes all encompassing with this. Overall, Troy Aikman had two seasons with the league's top passing DVOA. 1993-1995, Troy Aikman was the best quarterback in the sport. Oh, damn. He had five seasons, did Troy Aikman, in the top four for passing DVOA. So for five for five of his seasons, he was a top five quarterback for sure. And then a couple of those seasons, he was the single best. And then he had two more of his seasons that were ranked number seven. So he was consistently really, really good. But he notes Aikman's peak was absolutely excellent. Of course, we don't have the play-by-play -play for the 70s. So Staubach, he notes, was probably the best Cowboys quarterback. But then he says, one more note, Aikman is very rare in that he overcame two horrible years to develop into a Hall of Famer. His last half year was also really bad. So yeah. now we get to the worst passing DVOA by a Cowboys <laughs> quarterback with minimum 200 passes. And congratulations to the Wooly Bully Zach Walchuk for getting number one, which is 2002's Chad Hutchinson. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's brutal. the quarterback that had the oh. honor of handing yes, he did. Emmett yeah. Smith the record-setting football. That yeah. is Robert so Thomas sad. Really block, Robert yeah. Thomas blocking yeah. for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, It was. I'll tell you what, that was as bad... That was as bad of three years as I've ever experienced in football. That the, 2000 the, to 2003 kind of deal? The Dave Campo administration, yeah, we were awful. I mean, here today, teams move on from quarterbacks. They change out quarterbacks. You draft quarterbacks. 
you know, we, we just never could. We never got a break. And to the quarterbacks we evaluated, they're like these baseball players, you know, where there's Chad Hutchinson. We're listening to people tell us about, you know, Dana Bible telling us how great Chad Hutchinson is, you know, and then Drew Henson, you know, general manager from the Yankees, Stick Michael telling us how great, you know, all these people are just telling us about these players and we're all just believing it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, yeah, sure. Let's get this guy. Let's get that guy. Never had the opportunity. Yeah, we had a chance to draft Brady. You know, we had a chance to draft Brady. Didn't do it. So did everybody else. You know, probably could have changed the fortune of a lot of people if yeah. that was the case. You know, but for sure, man. I'll say this about Staubach. That, that season of 1977, when they beat the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl, he's 3 0 in the playoffs. He was right at it, like, I believe he was right at like a 60% passer for the year. So it wasn't the numbers. I mean, the team, he was, they were 12 and two, and, but he played as well as you could play. I mean, he, he, there was a lot of great players, Hall of Fame players on that team, but you watched him that season. I mean, he, he could do no wrong the way that he, Teflon. I mean, it was just the scrambling, the, the pocket presence, the hitting open receivers. You just, every weekend it was like, you, you were not going to lose. Something special. Yeah, you weren't going to lose. Yeah, that, he that's was special. A, man. He that that's if you if, I know that Aikman again competing against Aikman, he he deserves everything that he gets, and he was he's the best quarterback in my opinion. But man, if I that one time that one year Roger in seventy seven was as magical a season as a Cowboy fan as I've ever experienced. I think if I could, I'm you jealous know, of your eyeballs, bro. Go get one player and throw him into today's era. Roger's mobility mm -hmm. with a, you know, you you put him with like Kyle Shanahan or something, it would be incredible. Now, maybe the concussions, some injuries and stuff, he, they would stop bad. him running. That was bad. Yeah, they wouldn't let him run quite as yeah. much. Landry, yeah. Landry didn't want to let him run. That was a big, big thing. And when Roger Staubach first started, him and Craig Morton were – kind of competing against each other. And the one thing that was different was Craig Morton would stand there and throw the ball. Like and Landry liked that. But then when you watch Staubach play, you're like, well, wait a minute. This is a different aspect to this game. Like when the, when the pocket was breaking down, he could get out of the way. You know, he could make something happen. And they, you know, that, and, but Landry wanted nothing to do with him running the football. Man, I don't blame him, man. He had a big picture mindset. So I totally understand that. So Chad Hutchinson's the worst quarterback in Cowboys history, the 2002 season. Uh, and then you have Troy Aikman and Steve Walsh combining in 1989 for the second oh, the worst years. Cowboy. Uh, and then uh, Troy Aikman in 1990 is uh, is the third worst quarterback <laughs> season in Cowboys history, which is funny. And then, and I don't know if we've gotten texts on this at all. Quincy Carter, we've got a lot on Quincy. Quincy went to, uh, more Quincy recent. Went to, Quincy had a pretty good year in Quincy 2003. Quincy took him to a playoff. Quincy took more us recent, to a playoff. More Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton 2020 yeah. is the fourth oh, wow. worst quarterback season by a Cowboy. And then Troy Aikman uh, putting a nice bow on his career in 2000 is the fifth worst when, quarterback yeah. season. Oh, well, so he got, he got hit. Aikman wow. is uh, yeah. almost simultaneous, it's simultaneously your best Bookends. and worst quarterback. He got hit by LeVar Arrington, and that was the end. What would have happened if Cooper Rush had, had attempted 200 attempts last year? He probably would have kicked Troy out for one of these. <laughs> he was on fire, dude. <laughs> you mean for like the best seasons, right? Winning no, formula. <laughs> uh, DVOA, defense adjusted value over average. It's a fancy analytic, you know, measures a bunch of people stuff. People asking what that is. How good was the defense? Yeah. It, it takes every single play during a particular NFL season and compares each one to a league average baseline based on situation. So it measures not just yardage, but yardage towards a first down. Five yards on third and four are worth more than five yards on first and 10, and much more than five yards on third and 12. Yeah, Red zone plays are worth more than other plays. Performance is also adjusted for the quality of the opponent. So, I mean, it is it is an all-encompassing metric. A lot really of details. Cool. That's why you can't look at the box scores and like uh, reverse engineer that stuff. You know, to find out what happened in the 70s, you need the air yards and the yak and and everything uh, uh, where the players were, you know. To Talk about bad quarterbacks, by the way, too. I forgot to mention Brad Johnson in there. That was a tough oh, year. Yeah, Brad. Yeah, that, oh, was, that was regrettable. Played, played, played and Randall three, Cunningham at the played, end of his career, too. Played three games. In that 2001 season, I just looked this up, we played with Quincy Carter for eight games, Anthony Wright for three games, Ryan Leaf for three games, and Clint Sterner for two games. All in one year. That was my uh, birthing in a Cowboys family.